Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, here ahead of the opening of COP26 on Monday in uh, the Scottish Government's Glasgow headquarters. Uh, for the next fortnight, uh, obviously, Glasgow uh, and Scotland will be at the centre of world attention. Uh, hosting this conference is undoubtedly a huge honour for our country, but it is also a major responsibility. And obviously, the scale of the event is quite unprecedented, not just in terms of the numbers of people who are likely to come to Glasgow, but also, of course, the status and standing of some of those world leaders who will be visiting. It is inevitable, uh, given how uh, major event this is, that it will bring some disruption. Uh, that will be particularly true over the next few days as national leaders and heads of state, uh, together, of course, with more than 20,000 delegates, uh, arrive here in Scotland from countries across the world. Uh, we also know that certain dates are going to be particularly busy. Uh, for example, this coming Sunday, Monday and Tuesday during the World Leaders Summit. And there are planned demonstrations for Friday and Saturday of next week, which I'll say a bit more about in a moment. In addition, the security requirements of the conference mean that throughout the next uh, two weeks there will be, and indeed already is in place, uh, significant road closures uh, in the area surrounding the Scottish Events campus uh, where COP is taking place. So it is absolutely the case that we, and I know this is the very strong position of the United Nations, want people's voices to be heard. Uh, we want the voices of young people, of wider civic society, and of people from across the world to be heard loudly and clearly by those around the negotiating table. Uh, whatever anyone thinks of the negotiations taking place in the conference centre, and I can understand uh, why many think that world leaders are not yet doing enough, because world leaders are not yet doing enough, and that is one of the things we hope to see change during the summit. Uh, but regardless of views on that, uh, progress will not be made if discussions are disrupted. And more generally, and this of course applies to all protests, I would ask uh, that uh, people demonstrating uh, remember uh, and show consideration for the city and for people living in this city. Uh, the people of Glasgow are opening up their city to the world at what is a difficult time for everybody around the world. Uh, and I hope those who are traveling here to the city, welcome though they are to make their voices heard, will recognize that. This is uh, probably the most important global gathering of this century so far. It's not just in Glasgow's interest to have a safe and successful summit. That is in the interest of the entire world. Um, I know that the vast majority of people in Glasgow understand that. And even if we don't much like the disruption, we do understand the importance of what will be happening during this conference. Our policing operation, Operation Urum is one of the biggest ever undertaken in the United Kingdom. 7,000 officers and staff from every single police service in the UK are today arriving to join colleagues from Police Scotland. Over 10,000 officers will, on will be on duty uh, on some days of the conference. We will protect the rights of people who wish to peacefully protest at COP26, balanced against the rights of the wider community. But to those intent on violent disorder and damage, to those who seek to disrupt the climate conference actually taking place, I have a clear message. We will respond swiftly and we will respond robustly. Every individual within Police Scotland has a role to play, either directly deployed during the conference or in day-to-day -day business, ensuring every citizen in Scotland continues to get the help they need and deserve when they turn to their police service at times of crisis, at times of emergency. An event the size of COP26, of course, places considerable demands on policing, brings inevitable disruption to communities. Thus, maintaining an effective and responsive police service to all of Scotland has been central to our preparation since we knew that COP26 was coming to Glasgow, was coming to Scotland. 